Hey folks, welcome to the second installment of Modeling Linear Relationships for the General 2 HSC course. Today we'll be looking at writing the equation of a straight line. Just going to review the equation of a straight line, which is the y equals mx plus b. Um, reminding that the m means the gradient, which we have referred previously to um, also as the slope um, or the steepness, or in fact, um, we can also call it the rate of change between the x and y values. The b, hopefully remember also, is the y-intercept, which is the point where it cuts the y-axis. Um, in terms of the gradient, that's the main one that you need to find. The gradient is also given by um, the formula, the rise over the run, uh, and that's when you've been given a particular equation. Let's just draw one up there. and you need to draw a triangle onto that particular line. Um, for example, if I did a triangle here, and we looked at what the rise was, and we put it over what the run is, and of course, looking to see if it's a positive line um, like that, or in fact, if it was the other way around, it would be a negative uh, gradient. Um, the more advanced formula you might uh, have used, I'm not really going to be going through it, but you could y, use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the same thing as doing your rise, because that's the change in your rise values, over the run, which is the change in your run values. But again, that's a more advanced formula, uh, which you may or may not have used. So let's look at a question. We've got this uh, graph here, and we're asked to find um, the equation of this straight line. So I'm going to start by writing the y equals mx plus b, which I need to rewrite this formula, but I need to have a gradient value, and I need to have a y-intercept value. So my gradient value will simply come from looking at my rise over the run. Now, noticing that this is a positive gradient, therefore we know automatically it's going to be a positive value. Now, in order to find my rise over the run, I need to draw a triangle on here, and it's best to use points that are exact that we know. For example, that's the point 0, 1. This is the point 2, 2. So using this to draw my triangle okay, is most important. Um, I wouldn't particularly use a point like this, for example, and draw it there, because although I know that's gone across 3, it looks like it's gone like maybe 2.5 but I don't exactly know. So we like to use values that are absolutely exact. Um, I talk about them being on the crosshair, which is like that sort of cross line. So I know exactly that point. So if I now do rise over run, we can clearly see that my rise is gone up by one, which we can be seen between here. So one over my run has gone over by two. So I now have a gradient value of a half. My b value, my y-intercept, can be seen from this point here, which equals 1. So if my m equals a half, my b equals 1, I'm simply going to rewrite that formula and have y equals a half x plus 1. Um, some people may write it a little bit differently. They might may put it as y equals x over 2 plus one, okay, because those two things mean the same thing as well, but I kind of like this. And this is often referred to as the gradient y-intercept formula, because I can see the gradient from here, and I can see the y-intercept from here. Okay, how about you guys have a crack at the next one? So hopefully, we start by writing our y equals mx plus b down. We want to write a value for the m, we want to write a value for the b. So I'm going to go to my line, um, I'm going to take this point here, which is at 3, 3. You know what, I'm actually going to take this point here, which is 6, 6. I'm going to draw my little triangle here. Um, now, although it's gone up by one box, one box is going up by three numbers. Therefore, my rise in this case is 3. My run, well, that's 3 and that's 6, that's, that's 3 as well. So my m value is 3 over 3, which equals 1. And it's positive because it's going upwards, so it's positive 1. My b value, well, it cuts it at 0, so 0. So my formula then reads y equals 1x plus 0, or nice and easily, we can just write it as y equals x, and that is my line. That means that my y value is always equal to my x value, which makes a bit of sense. Okay, next one. Again, have a crack at it, guys. 
So hopefully you wrote down y equals mx plus b to start with. Once again, we need to find the m value and the b value. m comes from doing my rise over my run. I'm going to take this point and this point. They're really easy points to take. I'm going to draw my right angle triangle in. My rise in this case is 10 over. My run is 5. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. But now notice that my gradient is going down. Therefore, it should be a negative value, a negative 2. My B value is positive 10. So I've got my two values. So Y equals the negative 2X plus 10. Beautiful. And then we're going to go into a slightly more complex question here. Now, this question is a bit more challenging. I mean, one, number one, I don't have all my grid grids like I did in that last question. But see how I, when I look down, I go, okay, Y equals MX plus B. I can't see what this value is here. It's very hard to read. There's no values on there. I don't know what the great, what the Y intercept's going to be. I'm still going to do the same as I would start by doing before, and that is by trying to find my, my uh, gradient by doing the rise of the run. I'm going to draw my triangle on here. Now, obviously, this is a bit more challenging because I don't have the grid lines there. But if I'm trying to find my rise, you might be able to see, if, this again, this is my gradient, so I'm just going to put rise over run. You can see that the rise, this has gone up. This is my Y coordinate of 8. This is my Y coordinate of 4. Therefore, if that's 8 and that's 4, then my rise is 4. Likewise, my run, that X value is 2. That X value is 5. Therefore, the run value, if it goes from 2 to 5, means it's gone up by 3. Now, some of you may have been using the Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 formula. That is really useful here because you can just simply do 8 take away 4, which is the subtracting of my two y values, and then 5 take away 2, which is subtracting between two and my two y values, and that gives that 4 over 3 as well. Um, both of them are the same sort of thing, realistically, uh, but just using a slightly different formulas. Um, either way, what I've now got is y equals 4 over 3x plus I don't know what it's going to be. Okay, um, I might just put plus B. So I don't know what that B is. Make sure that is a B, that's not a 6. Sometimes we get confused. That's a B. So how do I find the B? Well, what we can do is we can take one of the two coordinates that we know, for example, that one there or that one there, and we can sub them into this formula for the Y and the X. That, hopefully, will allow me to then have one unknown letter, which in case, this case is the unknown letter of B. So if I take, let's say we take the 2, 4. Now, in this case, the 4 is the Y value. I'm going to put that in there. The 2 is the X value. So I've got 4 over 3 times 2, and I've got plus B. Okay, now I'm going to simplify this slightly. I'm going to put 4 equals, well, if I put this into my calculator, we're going to get um, 8 over 3 plus B, or maybe um, 2 and 2 thirds. I'm going to, get, going to now subtract the 8 thirds and put it over to the other side. And I'm left with, so on my calculator, I'm assuming we're going to do 4 take away 8 over 3, and I get the answer of 4 over 3, or 1 and 1 third. So now I've got my B value, I can simply replace it there. And I'm going to have Y equals 4 over 3X plus 4 over 3. And it's not a particularly nice equation, but certainly that's it. Now, look, this question here, this last one, you know, that's really unusual. It's a very tough question. You don't see them too often. Um, but if you do see them, they're going to be in your later stages, so your question 29s and 30s. Um, but you can still be expected to do that question, which you have to use it via substitution.
Look, guys, I hope this was uh, made a bit of sense to you. Please make sure you revise the formula of the equation of a straight line because you certainly will be asked to do this in the exam. In the exam. Um, often multiple choice questions, but certainly you can get the written questions too, which will be a little bit more complex. I'll do a, a lesson later on on exam questions so you can get consider different styles of questions that you might get. But please have a look at the next few lessons, which will be basically looking at, uh, um, at applied questions. Have an awesome day.